Welcome to Module 12. Creation according to physics and the Bible. Is there really a contradiction? This is the 12th and last module in a 12 module series entitled God and Modern Physics. It is presented by Father Robert J. Spitzer of the Maja Center of Reason and Faith, and it is based on his recently released book, New Proofs for the Existence of God. Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. Welcome to the Maja Center of Reason and Faith series, God and Modern Physics. I'm Father Robert Spitzer, and we've been talking about the evidence for a creator, a super intelligent designer, the evidence for God that comes from contemporary physics and astrophysics. We've seen in the previous episodes that there are three kinds of evidence, three sets of evidence that all converge on a similar conclusion. We saw three kinds of evidence from the law of entropy and three kinds of evidence from space-time geometry that all converged on the single conclusion that the universe or any multiverse in which it might be situated has to have a beginning, a point at which it came into existence implying a creator. And we also saw that uh, it is highly likely that uh, the universe uh, has some kind of design, some kind of intelligent design uh, that uh, would be necessary to explain the highly improbable, though necessary, constants and initial conditions which it has in order to provide for conditions hospitable to life. All three of these uh, things, and there are many such anthropic coincidences, we, we have only gone over but a few, all three of these evidence bases then converge on a supercalculating, super intellect, a transcendent creator that gives rise to the universe in a single moment. Now, now if that's the case, what do scientists say that the universe uh, evolved, or how do they think it evolved? And, Perhaps we ought to explain how this can be reconciled with the biblical account of creation because it's very different. Essentially, scientists say that 13.7 billion years ago, uh, there was a Big Bang, which may well have been the beginning of the universe. If it wasn't the beginning of the universe and there was some pre-Big Bang condition, the pre-Big Bang condition, whether it was a bouncing condition, a multiple universe condition, or some other condition, would very, very likely have to have a beginning itself. And so some point there is a beginning of the universe where the universe, its mass energy, its, its space-time field, its uh, constants are all thrown into existence in a single moment. Then at some point the universe explodes in, in this fiery uh, explosion called the Big Bang and, and it suddenly moves on its way. And then, of course, certain forces begin to separate off. So the gravitational force eventually separates off in the, in the form of the space-time field. It separates off from the other three universal forces, the strong nuclear force, the weak force, and the electromagnetic forces. And then other forces begin to separate off in other subsequent eras. And then, for a very brief moment, we have an inflationary uh, condition where the universe uh, it goes through exponential expansion for a very, very brief time. Uh, when it is in a very cool state, then the universe starts heating up again and, and of course, goes on its way, slowing down and, of course, e emerging as each of the, 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 the various kinds of fusion uh, take place and the various kinds of hydrogen nuclei, helium nuclei, then, of course, the, the emergence of stars, the emergence of galaxies, etc. The universe begins to emerge over this 13.7 billion year process, approximately 9 billion years into it. Uh, the conditions for life are beginning to emerge in terms of um, uh, stars which can support lives, life and planetary systems and eventually a life form emerges and that life form of course eventually gives rise uh, to intelligent life uh, such as human beings, the life that we know today. Now what can we make out of all of this? I mean what can we say? You know how does I mean, this doesn't sound like the biblical account of creation. Um, so what uh, uh, can we say about the biblical account of creation? Well, for Catholics anyway, 
uh, since the time of a, a, a papal encyclical called Divino Afflante Spiritu, it's perfectly okay uh, to believe in a scientific account of creation. And it's perfectly okay to believe in evolution, and certainly that evolutionary theory is verified in Humani Generis. But uh, more than this, uh, this encyclical says that the biblical author is not giving a scientific account. And this is really important because the biblical author is doing theology. And the biblical author is doing theology in the categories of his time. And the categories of his time are not hypothetical deductive reasoning about empirical measured observations. They're not highly mathematical constructions of theories to explain empirical observations. They're not about natural science at all. These are not the categories of the biblical author. God is not dictating things to the biblical author so that the biblical author doesn't bring anything to it, doesn't bring his culture to it, doesn't bring his um, level of development, intellectual development to it. God uses people with the input from the people that he's using. So it's, it's not kind of a dictation theory of revelation. Now, if we grant that you know, God would be using in, in, in revealing the, the biblical author, then we have to say the biblical author is doing things in, with the categories of his time, and he's addressing theological problems. Well, what problems is the theological author, the, the biblical author, addressing? Number one, the Gilgamesh epic and other epics that are roving around uh, the, the, the biblical author's time, they're saying that there are many gods. And the biblical author wants to correct that and say, no, there's one God. And they're saying that the natural elements are, are gods. So there's a sun god, and sea god, and so forth and so on. The biblical authors said, no, these are creations. They're, they're creatures. The sun's even a creature. God is God, and everything else is creature, including human beings. And, and then, of course, the gods are very capricious, and they're doing unjust things, and they're battling. And the biblical author wants to straighten that out. God's not capricious, and creation isn't bad. Every time God creates, he sees that it is good. So essentially, the biblical author is trying to correct theological problems of his time with the categories of his time, which is a very different project than what the biblical, uh, than what the scientific account is doing, and the scientific account, of course, is doing mathematical science. Now, are the two reconcilable? Absolutely. One account is definitely an explanatory scientific account of how the universe arose, probably starting 13.7 billion years ago, if the Big Bang is the beginning of the universe. And if it wasn't the beginning of the universe, then there was some pre-Big Bang period that itself had a beginning when the universe came into existence. And the, the theological account, the biblical account, is addressing theological uh, uh, problems and, of course, theological answers. And it's being dealt with in a way with the categories of the author at the time that the author was writing. When we put these two accounts together, we see a beautiful complementarity. A beautiful complementarity which speaks about the unrolling, unveiling, the manifestation of the universe. That it begins with this very small point and with uniform precision, and with distributions and constants that allow for an unfolding of the universe in a most magnificent and beautiful and symmetrical and uniform and law-like way, which has the precise values of the constants required for a life form to, to develop, one can see both intelligibility, intelligence, beauty, and of course, love, which is the very precise thing that the biblical author is trying to say in a theological way, that God develops all of these things so that at the end result, a human being might arise from the goodness of the creation of the one God. There is a confluence, and at the end of the day, it speaks to the goodness, the beauty, 
the intelligibility, the complexity, the wonder, the marvel, the mystery of creation. To learn more about this series and the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, please visit www.magisreasonfaith.org. That is www.magisreasonfaith.org. You may purchase Father Spitzer's book on this subject, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy on the website or through Amazon.com.